A very good afternoon to all the viewers out of Cadre.org, YouTube, Team Liquid. It doesn't matter where you're from, we love you. Um, with us is a, a person that everyone loves as well. It's uh, Dennis Tate Galen, the guy that runs Home Story Cup and has done for five times now. This is the sixth installment, so it, it's becoming quite a legacy, um, but it, it also brings its troubles. Um, firstly, I wanted to ask you um, the, the Christmas dates. It, it, it seemed like a real, a real nice idea to have it really Christmassy themed. And um, when I was here, it, it was kind of a, if I'm really honest, a little bit underwhelming. There wasn't so much Christmas that, um, that happened until Fuser obviously came in tomorrow, this, uh, this morning and absolutely uh, lighted the place up. Um, so was that um, specifically chosen because of the Christmas uh, relation or was it just because you wanted to have one more Home Story Cup this year? Well, actually, it wasn't chosen because of the Christmas time itself. Um, I always try to check out every single day we have in, in eSport, in StarCraft 2, but also I take care of a bit of the Dota 2 events, also League of Legends. If it's possible, there's no event at all. It's the best time for me to do a tournament. And this time uh, I've seen there's so many tournaments between November and also December. And we all know there, were, there, there have been nine events, sometimes two big events in one weekend. And I really want like to not have this at my tournament. It would hurt both tournaments for sure. And I've seen, okay, this is the day right before Christmas. I'm pretty sure there won't be any tournaments. And yeah, that's what, that was basically the, the main point why I did it just close before Christmas. So did, did it cause any trouble though? Because for example, our, our editor in chief couldn't come out because of his girlfriend. Now, not every girlfriend is that restrictive, but uh, I, I, can, I can imagine there are some problems. Um, I think Mr. Bitter is, is an example of that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, well, actually, as you can see, most of the Americans, for example, didn't come. Uh, people might think it's because of Christmas, but actually, uh, no, it's not because of Christmas. Some people, like, in control, had honeymoon. Okay, happens. I didn't know about this six months ago or five or four. Uh, otherwise, you would have go. So bad for us. Idra, for example, he wanted to go, but he was planning his holidays already, and I didn't know about it, uh, I don't know, like, I just knew it some weeks before Home Story Camp. So, okay, shit happens. Uh, Sheth, this time uh, Team Liquid didn't send him. Uh, this happens. I mean, you don't always send all your players to a tournament. We have Red here, we have TLO here, both of them did a good tournament, especially TLO. Uh, I hope they're going to send him next time, once again. Uh, this is one of more American. Uh, Destiny, for example, he was in Poland for all the time. Uh, and he decided close before Christmas, okay, man, this time I go home. Uh, I spend a lot of time in Europe, uh, Europe, but this time I go home, so I can't make it. He would have been here too. So it's it's like some some people might or uh, didn't go because of like Christmas or that they would like to see their families or go to holidays because for all of us uh, the end of the year means that we can take off some days and enjoy. It's not about Christmas, it's just it makes sense because everyone stops the big tournaments. At Christmas you don't gonna see a tournament. We had the last tournament this year in Sarkov too. So yeah it's also it's a bit about the, the teams they didn't send the players or well they had honeymoon for example. This happens. Uh, yeah it was it was okay. Yeah. Especially a honeymoon, you, can, you can't get underneath that one, can you? Um, now, are you afraid that that impacted the, um, the home story cup a little bit? Um, and what did you do to um, prevent it from people saying, well, last year, last time was so much better. Um, was there like specific scouting that you picked up players like Fuser? Because I don't think a lot of people heard about him before, but I think he's been the most vocal person out there. Uh, what have you done to sort of compensate? I think this, this lineup was one of the best we ever had, uh, not only skill-wise, especially also personality-wise. Uh, we had Whitera once again, we had Tarson here again, we had Fuser for the first time here. Uh, we had great personalities for the first time or finally back at the Home Story Cup. Whitera was here at Home Story Cup 3. He wanted to go 4 and 5, he was ill once, he had some problems uh, before that, like private stuff at Home Story Cup 4. So we, get, we got new uh, old characters which fit perfectly fine to Home Story Cup. But for sure, it, it's always sad to not have Jeff here, for example, in control. He's great personality. He's a native speaker, to be honest. Uh, it's just nice to have him on the couch. If he starts speaking, 
He's a great speaker. Um, everyone, like especially the Americans, love him, uh, and I love to listen to this guy. And there are so many more people who like that. Uh, he's a great personality. He's always funny. He has uh, good stuff that make us makes us laugh. And uh, yeah, I, I I think we got cool characters. Uh, it didn't hurt the Homestar Cup too much that some of them um, uh, were missing. Uh, it was more a problem about uh, the streaming problems in the beginning. Did this actually hurt the home story cup the most uh, I'm still sad about that uh, I think this home story cup I lost half a year of my life because uh, I was fucked up most of the time and um, yeah I hope this will never happen again um, one final question about the players before we'll go on to some more interesting stuff about you personally um, last year M uh, MVP was here and that was or last time it was a big announcement then people were really anticipating a lot and I think he kind of let down, and it, he was obviously injured. He had this uh, cervical kyphosis, um, but still, he wasn't really um, interacting a lot. He didn't. He didn't even go that far. So, were you um, disappointed with that? And what about um, M MMA that came here this year? Uh, I think I, I, you could say that he's kind of the replacement, so to speak, uh, as a big name uh, Korean. Uh, how did that work out for you? Well, I, I could. I'm not allowed to say I'm disappointed, but for sure I had expectations. Um, Sometimes, like Home Story Cup has funny care, funny players, and they have high skilled players. And both some of them are funny and high skilled. This is the perfect combination ever. But you can't expect to have all these guys on the same level. Uh, MVP from the beginning was expected as a very good player. Goes to, let's say, at least uh, top eight. I expected more even. Uh, you can always drop in a tournament. This happens. Uh, but yeah, it didn't happen. He lost very fa very s uh, in the beginning already. And beside that, he didn't even come to the event again. Uh, we invited him. Uh, we paid his trip. Uh, he lost the first day, I think. And then he st just stayed in Dusseldorf uh, at Rice Place. I don't want to blame him too much. Probably he felt bad. He had bad times. But also for me, it gave me a bad feeling. Uh, so don't get me wrong. Uh, it wasn't, I think probably it wasn't good for him, it wasn't good for us or for me. So yeah, this stuff, ha stuff happens. But yeah, I had a bit different uh, expectations. At least uh, it would have, would have been nice if he would have come and stayed here. And I mean, there were more Koreans. He could have just spent time with them. But beside that, he was just alone. Um, all right, so, so let's go on to you personally. Because um, I know that uh, you have become kind of the German StarCraft II hub so to speak. Uh, everyone's here every now and then. And uh, it's quite a surprising place to be in because you're basically, if, if I would draw a parallel, what Team Liquid is the StarCraft 2, you'd be the guy for the German StarCraft 2 scene. Um, how did you get into that position from uh, coming as a Warcraft 3 Pro and totally changing over your career to actually having all this going on? Can you give us a brief summary? Because I think it, it's, it, it must have been a like uh, a couple of years of time that went past, so as fast as, can, as possible. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, actually I was playing Warcraft 3 for Team SK. Um, when I was not playing that much anymore, I decided to start to do some organization. I, I founded SK06, which was like a youngster team, and they were all not that good. And now some people would be surprised, x Lord. He's the guy I pushed the most, and he's in the semi-final of Home Story Cup 6. In Warcraft 3, he was one of the best European players. He was one of the players who could beat Koreans, and now he's doing that once again. Uh, he has beaten uh, MMA, and yeah, I'm pretty proud of that still. Um, but yeah, that's how it started. I, I like to organize stuff. And then um, I was doing some uh, commentary stuff on German television. The channel was uh, called Giga TV. And it was just normal German TV, which was nice, because it's nice fan base. And at some point when I finished school, they asked me to uh, do commentaries in Warcraft 3. And I uh, just said, wow, nice, yes. So I had uh, uh, two years of uh, just studying there. And, like They, they sh have shown me how to do editor stuff and so on, uh, being in front of the camera. And uh, after this, I, I kept working for them uh, on the same point for ESL, because they bought some of the Giga TV channel, uh, and at some point I, I moved to ESL because Giga TV closed, 
and I kept streaming, casting, and StarCraft 2 came out. And for me, it just made sense because I loved StarCraft 1, and I knew it's time to go on. Warcraft 3 was dying at this point. Everyone was waiting for StarCraft 2 uh, because it took ages for StarCraft 2. Everyone wanted to have this game out, and uh, yeah, when it came out, I just started to play, I started to stream, and at some point I decided uh, to do some home streams in my old flat, which was like 50 square meters, 55, and people enjoyed it a lot. And uh, yeah, and then it just, it just, yeah, it snowballed, yeah, right. Uh, it became bigger and bigger. I had a home story cup, which was just for friends, soccer, rat, uh, house swaps, for example, the Muslim, me, Kevin, Rotterdam. And we had a lot of fun and we didn't expect people to love it that much. And from this point, I just grown. Uh, and yeah, at some point I said, well, I would like to have more people here, but it doesn't fit here. And then I was trying to scout for a bigger apartment and hope that I could uh, probably do my own stuff. Uh, I started together with ESL combined, like I did stuff for them, but still I could decide what I want to do. And then at some point I separated, I just said, okay, it makes more sense for me. I put in all my free time. I was working at some point more than 100 hours a week. Uh, and I said, wow, I have no free time and I still earn okay money, but I know for myself, I feel I deserve more. And if I do my own stuff, I can earn more money and I feel better, which is even more important because sometimes you have money, but you can't uh, invest it for, for hobbies or fun or whatever. Just said, I want to have a better feeling. I want to be my own boss and I would like to push eSport in, in the way I would think it's the best. And yeah, this, this is how it started. And now we are here and uh, there is a second flat and we use it right now. Um, what, what always um, strikes me of the StarCraft 2 scene, especially in Germany, is how tightly knit it is. I know, for example, uh, a Zocke, a Hasuobs, a Monchi, um, Ex-Lord. These are all like really good friends. And w what you'll also see is they always stick with the German teams, whereas a Dutch scene, it's, it's spread all over the place. Um, I, I, the only, put it this way, the only big name German person that I can think of that has a different team is TLO. Why is that? Do you think you play a part in that? Or is that something that, uh, for example, the German EPS or tournaments like that have a big influence in? Yeah, probably. I, I, I will not, I will not, I will not, I won't, I will, probably a bit. I will not say that I'm the reason, but I know, and this is a fact, that uh, I ask soccer dark force for example, to join Alternate, because I, I'm still the manager there. And I said, hey guys, I have a good opportunity for you. Would you, th would you like to join Alternate? I knew they are a very solid team. They always pay in time. They always send you to tournaments. And if you play well, they will pay you better. They are very fair. It's a big company and you can trust them. So that was a good point for me to just tell them, go there. And for XMG, Excel was trying to find a good team. He somehow tried it alone, but we also kept talking about it. I said, well, XMG might be a, a good option. And he asked himself. He asked, like, hey, is it possible? So, yeah, I mean, I sometimes give advices. Uh, Monchi, actually, I'm the guy who brought him to XMG. Uh, and he did very well at DreamHack. Um, and he's living in Krefeld now, so it makes sense that uh, I take a part there. But uh, beside that, yeah, Tilo. Uh, funny part is, uh, it's a story I've probably never told anyone uh, in the public. Uh, Tilo was almost alternate. Before he joined Team Liquid, um, he already agreed on joining alternate. And then he got a fucking good offer by Team Liquid. And everyone could understand. I just told him, okay, it's sad. Because he said, okay, let's do it. Uh, it was in the beginning, like in the very beginning. Same point uh, when Sock and Dark, Sock and Dark was joined. Uh, and then he just said, well, Dennis, sorry, but I got a very nice offer and Team Liquid is what I always want to do. I just said, man, totally understandable. Just go, because no, no one knew what's happening with Alton. It was a new team. Uh, no one knew about them in StarCraft. So yeah, that's it. So almost, I almost did it with Tilo. Uh, said I didn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think the German teams are the most solid teams in Europe. You You know that if you play for mouse sports or uh, alternate, you get paid. You don't have big troubles. Look at the Germans, they never leave. It's not because they, are, they just want to be with the Germans, no. Soccer, in the beginning, thought about other teams too. Also about Team Liquid. Um, but they always know that you can count on them. 
they pay, they have more structure because eSport has grown so much in uh, Germany. There was always being the ESL and uh, with the ESL the teams grow, has grown too. I think this is, this is why probably uh, the German uh, players like to stay in German teams. Um, all right, so we'll get rounding off and we'll start about talking about this tournament itself. Um, I, I, I've been asking everyone, and all of the players all agree it, it's, a, it's a success once again. But as you, as you said before, um, with, with the ISP failure or the Twitch failure, I'm not really sure what the problem was. It's probably worth mentioning that no one really knows, so no one is really to blame. Um, has it really let you down that much, or has the, um, you know, the, the friendliness and the, the parties here, have, have they kind of made it okay in that terms? Uh, I've, I've mentioned in the beginning, uh, I ser seriously think that I lost half a year this home strike up. I'm not kidding. I, always, I already felt it when I, when I said it, uh, that I f still feel very bad. Um, I'm not satisfied at all. Like, this is the, wor the, the worst home strike up I've ever done. Um, I think most of the problems came from us. We had, actually, we had only one big problem, which was the internet. Uh, we had some new hardware, we, we tried it in advance, so we, we, we put up everything, it worked well, so we didn't th see any problems there. Uh, in the live show it was different. Um, yeah, actually, I think it was basically our fault this time. Uh, we had one admin decision which, which was bad. Um, so also there, I think this time it was my fault. I should have been decided faster. Um, we never had this situation before. I tried to explain that also on Reddit and Team Liquid. I've never expected, for example, XR to take the death win, even when we offer him 2-0 in a best of five. Um, but this stuff happens. It's a real tournament. It's it's my uh, it's yeah it's our problem if we oh it's our decision. The player should never decide. I, I to be honest, I found the idea was pretty okay to have three players secretly vote for it and decide if it's not if it's a regame or not. But we already decided for the next time of even if we would have done uh, had the problem today with uh, disconnects that we always give a regame until it's decided 100%. Um, so yeah, for the future we know what we do. Uh, so I still want to say sorry to EG. I already fixed that with Alex. Uh, we had a good chat. Um, I think everything should be okay already. And uh, well, we mistakes happen. Happens. It's just natural. It, it's human being. And uh, yeah, I hope this won't happen anymore. Any other time anymore. Um, rounding it off then entirely is uh, you've opened a whole new floor um, for the home circuit. Before it was only the the bottom and it, it was really packed but it kind of added something as well but you've decided um, you want more relaxing area and you had the foosball here it was a great success but it does make me wonder um, does it ever become too invasive does it ever occur to you that you're like well it's, it's, it's okay I'll give them this but my bedroom is right here my weight uh, my weight lifting room is right there I mean does it ever hurt like is it gonna start hurting your privacy a little bit what, what are your thoughts on that no not even a bit uh, I had a girlfriend some time ago, uh, she helped me a lot. Most of the community even know, knew her, especially the German one. Uh, I could understand when I was still with her that she didn't like it too much. So that's why I wanted to have a new flat whenever I have the chance. We split up. <laughs> uh, great timing. <laughs> and uh, no, I, I've never had a problem with that. Um, it was, it's a lot better now because this actually is my new flat, which I would like to use most of the time private. I have, for the first time in two years, a own room with a bed. Before that, I have had my production room in the same room as my bedroom, which was just a bed. It was just a bed, not a TV, nothing. Uh, I feel already a lot better. Uh, I put a lot of money into to this flat. I don't have a car or anything like that. I just said, this year I invest a lot of money into my new flat. I asked a lot of friends to prepare everything here. Uh, they, they painted everything. We had new uh, lights, everything. So it's still not done. There will be a nice couch coming soon. I am waiting for that for a long time, 16 weeks. And it's fucking nice. It's very nice. I mean, there will be a lot of people jealous from my, from my friends. And I already told me, because I was so happy, I, I've shown it. And I was like, look at this couch, it's fucking nice. And we're like, what the hell, it was very expensive. I was like, yeah, but I had to do it, man. It was so nice. Uh, so I feel a lot better. I think my privacy gained like, like this compared to before. And 
home story club is still being here with friends because from out of 32 people I would call a lot of people like already real friends uh, and the other ones are cool people which I like so I have no problem to have people here in my rooms which I like and we, which are friends they could whenever they have a problem they could go here they could sleep here they could eat with me everything I would share everything with them so no it's it's totally fine that's a really nice answer and I, I guess a good a good note a positive note to finish the interview on so um, I definitely like to ask uh, actually thank you for sending us the invite we know we're a little bit late with the email but we got an email back within like the hour and it was it was absolutely great um, and I'll give the last words to you well you are always welcome when I've seen you I was actually I was waiting <laughs> I'm honest, I was waiting. When I've seen it, I immediately answered. I would like, I uh, just said, we'd love to see you here once again and go party and so on. Uh, yeah, I, the people who came here and they were always a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it with you. Sadly, one of you guys couldn't make it. And uh, that's sad, but this happens. I hope to see you again next time. And uh, well, Home Street Cup probably was not the best in my opinion. Um, I promise it will be better next time. We had a great lineup. We still, like, I have to mention, the people here at the Home Street Cup itself, I noticed it. They had a lot of fun, and they still have. And some people even say it was the best, but they didn't see what's happening outside. They just enjoyed the environment here. Um, but I hope you, you can just, well, forgive mistakes. And uh, whenever I say I will try to improve, I will, and I do my best. And I think I can still do a lot better. And, uh, yeah, my team, for sure. And... Well, thank you for watching Home Story Cup. So far, we are not done. I think when the interview is online, probably, and hopefully you just say this day was a lot better because we didn't have any disconnects today. We fixed the problems. Uh, so people realized that we tried to fix everything. So thank you, and thank you for the interview.